Continuing on the topic of password security, um, in on a shadow file on a Unix system um, such as Linux, there is a um, a prefix in the the shadow file that tells you, along with the password, what hash function was used. So you know if you have a dollar one at the start, that means it's MD5 based. Dollar uh, two is Blowfish, which was um, created by Bruce Schneier and his team. There's SHA-2 base, like with it, which includes uh, $5 or $6. Um, and so, for example, if we look um, on uh, this system, um, we can see that uh, it's using SHA-2 um, with this salt and this hash. And if we want to, to change our password on a Linux system, there is the password command that you can use. So, uh, sorry, password command uh, it asks for the current password, and then it asks prompts you for a new one. Um, and that will actually, as a normal user, you can run that command uh, and it will update this shadow file that normal users can't um, you know, usually access. So you'll see here that uh, this has changed. So there'll be a new salt and a new, par a new password um, hash as well. Um, so you know, there are a number of um, weaknesses to passwords and we'll just discuss some of them. So password aging is one of them in terms of how you manage password aging. So password aging is where you tell someone they've had their password for too long and it's time for them to change their password. It used to be considered best practice to do this a lot, um, but generally speaking if you do that people end up with very bad passwords. They end up writing their passwords on post-it notes or just using you know very bad passwords because if they have to change their password every week or something then it's it gets tiresome as a user, um, I can speak from experience. You know, when you're forced to change your password all the time, it's really annoying. Um, so generally speaking, you should give people notice that you, they're going to need to change it, and you shouldn't, they sh you shouldn't force them to do it any more often than, than they need to, really. Um, you know, it's good to know, you know, one of the arguments for it is that obviously if a, syst if a account's been compromised, then it limits the amount of time that they have access to that account before they end up needing to try and get access again. But um, you know, really, the the, the benefits um, can be outweighed by the um, disadvantages if people end up using really bad passwords or get annoyed as a result. So, some of the things that we do as countermeasures against specific weaknesses. So. One weakness of using passwords is if we just store them, people can access the passwords. So the countermeasure against that is to hash them first. Um, <clears throat> you might think that you could just should just like encrypt it instead of using one way hash function, but there's a lot of practicality, practical reasons why that's not a good idea. You need to like read that file quite often, or the system itself needs to read that file. <clears throat> there's no reason why you, you should really need the plain text version. Um, so in almost all cases, you shouldn't. Uh, you should just use hashed versions of your passwords in terms of how you store them on a system. And if you're developing some software, then you need to store credentials somewhere. You should always hash them first. Um, so an attack is to use dictionary attacks. Um, so for example, you just basically, an attacker tries all the dictionary words uh, against the passwords. So the countermeasure there is to use high entropy passwords uh, and like actually use good passwords that are um, not just a dictionary word uh, and use an algorithm uh, that, that takes a longer time to compute the hash. So it takes a little bit longer, does a few more rounds of it computation, then that can make it more difficult for someone to do um, the password cracking. If you're doing an online attack, you can just build in a delay <clears throat> so if you've got an API where people can try and log in, if they try and log in again from the same IP address, make them wait a little bit. Because <clears throat> that can, um, you know, obviously make it harder for the, the, part, the, the attacker. 
<coughs> you can also do things like make it take longer. If it's an online attack, you can um, build in increasing delays um, or lock them out at some point, but that can give you a, uh, give the attacker a way of performing a denial of service against an attacker as well, so ag against a, a user. Um, so brute force is where you try every possible password. So you try A, A, B, A, B, C, B, you know, you try like every combination of letters. Um, the countermeasure against that is to use a decently sized password or a decent key size. Um, and that will effectively make that impossible if you actually have a really good strong password um, and a hash function that lets you use a good password and doesn't limit it to too many, like only a few characters. Um, and you use a um, cryptographically strong hash function, then even an offline brute force attack can basically um, become impossible uh, or computationally impossible. Um, on a, even on modern systems. Uh, you can do pre-computed attacks that we talk, discussed before, and the countermeasure is to use a, a salt or a large enough salt to mean that um, they can't pre-compute all the hashes in advance. Um, and rainbow tables is a type of pre-computed hash that stores its starting points for long chains of hashed passwords, and the countermeasure for that is to use a salt as well. So a replay attack is another kind of attack, um, which is where we uh, when we're authenticating over a network and the passwords are, are being sent over the pass over the network um, as a hash, then a replay attack it allows someone to basically hear the password and use it again. Um, so you like eavesdrop on the network, you see a hash being sent over the network, uh, you grab that and you send it again. Uh, it's actually a common um, attack against Windows systems called pass the hash attacks. Um, where some of the um, network protocols that do uh, that from that Windows users will send hashes of passwords over the network, um, and when you hear that hash, you can just replay it. Um, so, actually, before I wrap up with a conclusion, why don't we have a a little bit more of a look? So, actually, no, let's wrap it up, and I'll record it as a separate video. So, so in summary, um, you know, we've talked about um, how passwords work, we've talked about how passwords are stored, we've talked um, in this video about how um, salts are used and stored, and uh, kind of listed some of the kinds of attacks against passwords and some of the countermeasures that you can use. And I'll record one last password, a last um, video on the topic of passwords, giving just a quick demonstration of some password cracking.